Hello everybody and welcome back to yet another episode of Weird Disney Cars Diecast Errors and Inconsistencies, the series where I discuss mistakes and oddities both big and small from across all of the different Cars toy lines. Today I'm being joined by Rashid Reviews, who I'm very excited to have here because he's actually the one that made the intro for Errors and Inconsistencies, the intro that I've played in front of almost every episode for the past year now. Hello everyone, I'm Rashid Reviews, and you might have seen me pop up a few times in Ty's channel. Now, this isn't my first time being featured in errors and inconsistencies. I had an entry in the 10th episode, but this is my first time being the co-host of a whole episode. I'm very glad to have you here today. And you know, I was thinking, since you made the series' as regular intro, I, I was thinking, maybe I'd take things into my own hands, sort of pay you back by making my own special intro for our collab episode. So I worked for hours and hours and hours, and I finally made the perfect intro for this episode of Errors and Inconsistencies. Behold, this episode's special intro made by me. All these cars are really bad, and it makes me kind of mad. Errors and Inconsistencies. So, what do you think? That was the worst thing I've ever seen in my entire life. Oh, uh, okay. M maybe we should just get started. You go first. I I'm, I'm gonna go cry in the corner. I mean, I'm gonna go get ready for my segment. As most of us know, in the early years of the Cars diecast line, McQueen did not have any logos on his spoiler. None of his variants had the Rusty's logo on a spoiler, but as we all know, Mattel went ahead and corrected that mistake for the McQueen variants that were new in 2008, and even corrected the regular McQueen in 2009. And starting from that year, most McQueen variants have had the logo on the spoiler. Except for Dinoco McQueen. For some reason, Despite re-releasing him almost annually since then, they didn't add the logo on the spoiler. But apparently they didn't have a problem with putting it on Bling Bling and Lightning Storm McQueen. I just don't get it. Why not add this detail that would just take 5 minutes to add and just elevate the diecast to... A new level. Now, he hasn't been released since the Thailand switchover, so maybe Thailand could finally correct him if they ever release him. Trainer Cruz Ramirez is a diecast that was released in early 2020 that confused a lot of people when it came out. Most people assumed that this was just regular Cruz in our normal design, and they decided to rename the diecast Trainer Cruz because. It's her when she's a trainer. It's just her regular blank yellow Rusty's Racing Center design. But that isn't the case. This cruise is actually a unique variant that features the earpiece that she wears at the Rusty's Racing Center. But this is something that basically nobody could tell when the diecast was first revealed for two reasons. Reason number one, they didn't put the headset on Cruz's artwork and just used the regular Cruz artwork. And number two, the diecast was facing right in the blister. And this accessory is only on her left side, so nobody could really see that it was there. In early 2020, when she was released, every car's diecast was facing the right side in its blister, and this really negatively affected trainer crews because, again, you couldn't even tell that the headset was on her. But Mattel actually seems to have learned from this mistake, as in 2021, when they re-released her, they gave Trainer Cruz her own unique artwork that featured the earpiece so that you could easily see that she had it. Also, halfway through 2020, for literally no explained reason, they flipped which way all cars were facing in the packaging, something that ended up helping Trainer Cruz because in her 2021 release, now that you're seeing the other side of her, you can see that the headset is on her. This series is no stranger to the 2008 Movie Moments 2-packs. In fact, I even talked about one in episode 10. Ty talked about how they photoshopped Doc into a screenshot of the movie he didn't appear in, but this time, they didn't even try to make it look like a screenshot from the movie. 
the artwork for the Luigi, Guido, and Tractor Pack is straight up just generic artworks of Luigi, Guido, and a tractor slapped onto the 2006 Desert artwork. This isn't even a photoshopped screenshot. It's just artwork that isn't even from the movie. I just find that so hilarious. They didn't even try with this one. Every Cars diecast in 2022 has been packaged with their left side showing. This is how it's been done for several years now, ever since they suddenly switched having the cars face right to having them face left halfway through 2020. Now, I'm just talking about the cars in the blisters, not on the artwork. This is specifically which way the cars are facing in the packaging. And everyone in 2022 has been facing with their left side showing, with two exceptions. These two exceptions being Matthew True Blue McCrew and Tractor with Tire in Mouth. So, while all of the other cars are facing left, these two rebels have decided to break the mold and face the other way. But why? Well, it's quite simply because both of these cars have accessories on their right sides. Matthew has a very flimsy flag accessory attached close to the right side of the car, and even in previous years when all the other cars were facing left, Matthew has always been packaged facing right to secure his flag there for the safety of the flag so that it doesn't get broken so that you see it better also I'd assume is probably part of that, but I think it's mainly just for the safety of the accessory because it is pretty thin. As for Tractor with tire in mouth, the tire is only really sticking out of that side of his mouth. It's only really sticking out of the right side, so they had it face right so that you see the tire inside of the tractor's mouth. It's good to see that Mattel has seemingly learned from the mistake that they made with Trainer Cruz a while back. This series is also no stranger to the 2010 Mater's Tall Tales diecast line. Ty has covered ridiculous errors relating to this line, like the infamous Rodney the Rocker error. Despite him being clearly on screen for several shots of Tokyo Mater, Drift Party Mater uses a screenshot of the regular Tokyo Mater. Again, this isn't a new error or anything. Ty had actually covered a similar error in a previous episode, but what really bothers me is that for Tokyo Mater with oil stains, they use a screenshot of Drift Party Mater. So Mattel were clearly aware that Drift Party Mater appeared a fair amount in the short, but they still made an error. In 2017, the Radiator Springs Classic line released its first deluxe wave and made some pretty interesting choices for it. This wave was comprised entirely of the cab-only versions of all of the miscellaneous truck stop and delivery trucks that appear throughout cars. Cars like Jerry Recycled Batteries, Ben Crankleshaft, Paul Valdez, etc. They released just the cabs for all of them, uh, minus Oliver Lightload for some reason. F's in the chat for Oliver Lightload. The strange thing about all of these, and what I find so weird about the fact that they chose to make them, is that none of these characters appear without their trailers in the movie. In fact, if you look at their artwork, they didn't even edit out the trailers, they deliberately kept the trailers attached to them. Compare that to the Piston Cup cabs that we get nearly every year. Those never have their trailers attached in the artwork, and usually, the Piston Cup cabs don't even appear in the movies. Compare that to these guys, whose trailers are always attached to them whenever they're on screen, and they know that, and they know you know that. That's why they kept it on the artwork. This wave will always stand out as such an odd choice to me, although honestly, at the end of the day, I'm kind of glad it happened because it's just such a weird oddity in the Cars diecast line to me. I think it's pretty cool. Although Jerry recycled batteries without his trailer attached, something about that just makes me uncomfortable. In 2007, all of the Ramones were just called that, Ramon. Except for Cruz and Ramon for some reason. 
why only him and not the others? Why why did they just suddenly decide in the middle of 2007, hmm, you know what? Let's give our Ramones different names. Well, sorry to break it to you, Mattel, but it was kind of too late. You released like three other Ramones already, and they were all called Ramon, all in the same year. So, yeah, kind of too late for that. So, yeah, there isn't much to say about this, but I just thought it was weird. This next one is one that's kind of stupid, but I honestly just think it's pretty funny. In 2011, when Cars 2 was first coming out, they released three packs that they called Character Stars 3 Packs. This would include, much like the 2017 three packs, two singles and one deluxe. No exclusive releases, just generic singles and deluxes that are vaguely related to each other packed together. For example, Holly with Wings, Petrov Trunkov, and Acer, okay? Holly and Two Lemons. Or Lightning, Shu Todoroki, and Pinion Tanaka. Okay, Lightning and two cars that appeared in Japan. All of these three packs contain three characters that fit under a unifying theme. Okay, so where's my problem here? Well, take a look at the Holly, Petrov, and Acer three pack. You can see that Holly with wings has been propped up on a piece of clear plastic to make it look like she's flying above the lemons included in the pack which I think is just a fun little detail. It adds to the presentation of the pack. It shows here that Holly is flying. I think it works really well. But can you tell me why they did the exact same thing for the Submarine Finn McMissile 3 pack? Why is he flying? Well, why is he above these other two cars? He's a submarine. The whole point of, of the scene in the movie is that he, he uses this mode to sink down to the bottom of the ocean. Why is he flying? How is he above them? Now, it's my own personal theory that they only did this because they realized it was the only way they could make Finn fit in the box. Also, Submarine Finn McMissile is a car that's just kind of formatted really weird. Of course, with his wheels facing the back, he leans downward if you place him down. So if they just placed him on the ground of the three-pack, he would look kind of weird. So I get why they chose to do that. I just think it's kind of funny. It just kind of implies that Finn, in his submarine mode, can fly now. This is one of the more recent errors compared to the other ones I'm covering. For some reason, the Mini Racer's Mater's back wheels are both yellow, unlike the movies, where he had his left one yellow and his right one blue. Now, you can argue that this may be a cost-cutting thing, or Mattel were just too lazy or whatever, but... If that was the case, why bother making the 155 scale diecast accurate then? It just feels weird, like, it's, I guess it's like, it's a set of wheels, so it's easier to just make it like, a set of wheels the same color, than to color them differently, or apply each wheel separately, or something like that. To end today's episode, I'm going to talk about an item from the Wood Collection, which I don't think I've ever talked about on this series or on this channel in general. This toy line, released to coincide with Cars 2, is basically the Cars equivalent of the Thomas Wooden Railway or other similar wooden toy lines like the ones made by Brio and all that. It uses the same general type of track system, and it released a bunch of playsets with racetracks and locations from Cars and Cars 2, and quite a wide range of different characters and character variants typically sold in two packs. And while I think a lot of these characters look really good and translated into the art style of these blocky wooden toys very well, there's just one pack that seems off. Lightning and Luigi. Because Luigi is absolutely massive. Now there have been several toy lines in the past, in fact I'd say the majority of Cars toy lines with the exception of like the 155 scale diecast line, tend to make Luigi and Guido out of scale with the rest of the characters, just because they're so small, it makes them pretty difficult to make. But here, Luigi is so big, it's absolutely ridiculous. And here, there's a reason why, and it's a pretty interesting reason. It seems that Luigi was made as large as he was, so that he could fit on the track just like any other car. Of course, all of the cars in this line were made to fit on wooden track, and thus were all made at the exact same width. So, because of that, 
Luigi was made super wide so that he could fit on the track just like anyone else could. If they had made Luigi an accurate scale to the other characters, he wouldn't fit tightly on the track. So they sacrificed accuracy for making him work better with their track system. The same thing is true for Guido and some other smaller characters from the line like Cruz Basoro, who were all made as big as the other characters just so that they could fit on the track right. Anyway guys, there you have it. Another episode of Weird Disney Cars Diecast Errors and Inconsistencies. A huge thank you to Rashid Reviews for joining me for this episode. A link to his channel will be in the title because you could do that now. It's pretty cool. Thank you, YouTube. Thank you all so much for watching and we'll see you guys next time. Bye now.